arrived at the uh, time where the candidates can ask questions of each other. Uh, again, the rules of uh, the debate available for anybody who wants to look, but uh, if we can have each question, it takes, say, a minute or so, two minutes for a response, and then a one-minute rebuttal. Let's start with Mayor Cicilline. Question, Mayor, for Representative Laughlin, if you could. Uh, yes. <clears throat> Representative Laughlin, you um, have said repeatedly that you want to repeal health care reform. Uh, what will you say to the women who will lose coverage for mammograms, the 3,590 young adults in Rhode Island who won't be covered on their parents' plans, and the roughly 13,443 Rhode Islanders who will once again be discriminated against based on pre-existing conditions when this law is repealed? That's one of the reasons, Mayor, why I've always said it's repeal and replace. We need to repeal the laws that exist and replace it with, uh, with real health care reform that drives the cost of medical care down, that makes real progress in, uh, in having meaningful tort reform, that provides uh, people more choice by having competition across state lines, and provides the ability for... Uh, for the health care system to really serve the needs of the people. There are some elements in the health care bill that were positive. Those should remain, uh, and I've said that consistently. But I think we need to repeal and replace the current re legislation with one that's not going to drive our economy down. Yeah, th this is a Republican talking point that's being used around the country, repeal and replace, because they recognize repeal doesn't make sense because there are hundreds of thousands of Rhode Islanders in, in Rhode Island who will benefit from these provisions. What we really need to do is understand that this is – legislation which we have to go back at and make improvements in, but repealing it is not the answer. It provides real relief to families, to people with pre-existing conditions, to our young people, to our seniors. And this idea of repeal in place is sort of a clever way of saying, I want to repeal everything that is challenging but replace it with everything that's good, which is, doesn't make sense. And so um, we really need to, be ch we need to challenge Representative Luffin. What exactly is he replacing it with? Um, and what, how, does, how does it pay for itself? This reduces the debt, reduces the deficit, pays for itself. And we, we, I think he owes it to the voters of the 1st Congressional District to say how he's going to do the same thing. Representative Laughlin, a question for Mayor Cicilline, if you could. Sure. Mayor, can you tell me uh, when your brother will pay back the <coughs> $75,000 he owes the city for kiting a check? And can you explain to listeners how he managed to get a business license in the city of Providence when he owes the city such a large sum of money? Um, my brother John uh, does not owe the city uh, money. That money is owed by the taxpayer. The city has filed action and received a judgment against the taxpayer in that case. Uh, he is now operating a business in the city. He's entitled to a license the same way anyone else is. Uh, he's uh, the father of three children and supporting them, and uh, he is certainly entitled to run a business and operate a pizza parlor in the city. Representative? You know, I can certainly tell you that if I had walked into the Tiverton Town Hall and owed the uh, town of Tiverton $75,000 <coughs> by writing a bad check and then turned around and asked them for a business license, there's very, very little opportunity that I would get that license. And I think it's, it goes back to this, uh, this scandal after scandal that seems to come from the city of Providence and a scandal trail that this mayor will take with him to Washington. Mayor Cicilline, a question for Representative Laughlin. Uh, Representative Laughlin, um, you have made the claim repeatedly that you believe that the science of global climate change is inconclusive, and as a consequence, uh, you do not support a serious national effort to reduce carbon emissions and uh, do not recognize the opportunity that global climate change and the development and production of renewable energy provides to our country to become a world leader in this area. And I'd ask you, what evidence do you use when you claim that it's inconclusive whether pollution has an impact on global warming? Clearly the evidence uh, comes from the IPCC, the uh, international panel that's uh, charged with climate change research. And if you looked at the leaked emails that, were, uh, that came out last summer, um, it showed evidence that, uh, that scientists had actually cooked the books, that they put temperature sensors in places where they didn't uh, necessarily give accurate readings, uh, and that there was uh, a, a concerted effort to cover any <coughs> evidence that was exculpatory to uh, human-caused global warming. Um, Ninety percent, or greater than 90 percent, of uh, carbon emissions that occur are naturally occurring. Um, and I think it's foolhardy to base uh, government policy and provide a whole raft of new taxes that cap and trade would uh, on science that yet has yet to reach, I think, a, a, an absolute conclusion, an absolute certainty that man is causing global warming. Um, and again, it's, it's not a good way to make policy, and it's going to be harmful to our economy, because I believe cap and trade makes the earth more polluted uh, at the same time as it drive jobs, drives jobs out of the country, because those industries with high carbon footprints are forced, therefore, to locate overseas, where uh, in some countries the environmental laws are nowhere near as strict as they are in the United States. So uh, it's a bad bill. It's a bill that my opponent supports, uh, and it's a bill that I think ultimately will make our environment worse and our economy much, much worse. Um, he keeps saying it's a bill I support. I have never said I support cap and trade. I said what we have to do is recognize global climate change is real. It's an economic 
and national security interests that we have in solving this problem. Last night, Representative Lawford equated global climate change to the Easter Bunny. If you don't really believe that this is serious, and there is broad scientific consensus, this is not an open question, that it is caused by pollution, that it is an urgent environmental, an urgent national security, and an urgent economic issue. But if you don't actually believe in it, you can have a disagreement about should it be cap and invest, cap and trade, some other system, but we've got to reduce carbon <coughs> emissions. We have got to produce and develop clean energy. And and if you don't believe that, then you can't go to Washington and fight to make that happen. Representative Loughlin, a question for the mayor, <clears throat> sir. Sure. Yeah, you've often said, Mayor, that you're proud of your record in Providence. If I'd done what you d did in Providence, I'd be ashamed. Can you tell me how you can ask the voters to support you when you so badly mismanaged the city's budget and your administration has been embroiled in literally scandal after scandal, kind of the scandal du jour? Uh, I'm incredibly proud of the work we've done in the city of Providence. Uh, we have uh, re totally reformed uh, the way we do public safety in our city, and we have the lowest crime rate the city's had in 30 years. That doesn't happen by accident. Uh, we developed a community policing model, uh, restored walking beats, opened nine neighborhood substations. We created a Providence After School Alliance, which is a national model for after school programs now being replicated in 17 cities. Uh, we built the best career and technical academy in the Northeast for our kids. Uh, just renovated uh, Nathan Bishop Middle School, have the best high school in the state, uh, Hope, uh, classical high school. Um, lots of good work being done to reassign teachers based on the needs of kids, not the seniority of adults, and got rid of bumping as part of that. So there's a lot of, we led the group and raced to the top and brought 75 million to invest in Rhode Island. Providence can continues to be recognized as one of the top cities in America for arts and culture five years in a row, the top 25 cities. Um, we continue to attract new investment. During my term as mayor, more than $3 billion has come to the city just this past week. Umicore brought 100 manufacturing jobs here. We'll announce tomorrow at the port new infrastructure there that will create 550 jobs. Uh, so even in this difficult recession, continuing to attract investment in the city. And it's hard to imagine that someone who's asking the voters to allow him the privilege of representing this district in the Congress of the United States, which includes the city of Providence could speak so disparagingly about it. It's a city that has an A bond rating, that na has navigated through really difficult financial times, despite what the state has done in terms of cuts. And it's a city uh, and an administration that I'm very proud of and the work that we've done to bring integrity and honesty and transparency to this great city. Representative Loughlin. You know, if you had just dropped in here from a spaceship, you would think after listening to the mayor that Providence is the shining city on the hill. The facts are $70 million deficit. Under his watch, an unfunded pension liability that went from $300 million to $1.2 billion. Four of the five worst performing Rhode Island schools are in Providence. Nineteen out of the worst performing uh, 25 are in Providence. Four out of the eight middle schools. A reading level that uh, half the kids that graduate from elementary school can't even read. Um, it's, a, it's a shameful record. Uh, there have been five superintendents in Providence over the last seven years, and four of them have come from out of state. Mayor Cicilline, a question for Representative Laughlin. Uh, Representative Laughlin, uh, you have uh, taken great pains to uh, distinguish your privatization of Social Security position from uh, President Bush. And I would ask you, how is your position on Social Security different than the one George W. Bush articulated in 2005 when he said, I believe you should be able to set aside part of the money in your own retirement so you can build a nest egg for your future. I think that citizens, I'm sorry, as we fix Social Security, we have the responsibility to make the system a better deal for young workers. And the, and the best way to reach that goal is through voluntary personal retirement accounts. Those are exactly the same words you have used to describe your proposal to privatize Social Security. How is it different from what President Bush tried to do in 2005? Well, what's endangering uh, the Social Security spending or the Social Security account right now is the reckless spending that's taking place in Washington. Again, in the 1960s, it was a Democratic Congress that took money from the trust fund and put it in the general fund. Uh, the spending has gone through the roof. I have said that I think optionally, optionally, at their option, younger workers should be allowed to take a small portion of their payroll taxes and divert them into private accounts. The rate of return on Social Security is 0.65%. 0.65. And over the long haul, the stock market performs far better. Uh, the 25-year average, 11.98%. Uh, let's say it's half that. That's 10 times the rate of return. That allows these young people, when they become seniors, to retire with dignity, with much more money, with much more of the ability uh, to pay for the things that they need in retirement. Uh, again, what's endangering the, the Social Security Trust Fund is the reckless spending in Washington uh, that my opponent supports and, and will support down in Washington. 
there? Yeah, no one is suggesting uh, that we should have reckless spending in Washington. Of course, spending is out of control, and I've outlined during this campaign how we can contain it. But I think Representative Laughlin has answered again that his position is not different from, from George W. Bush's position in 2005. It is privatizing Social Security. It's taking money out of Social Security, putting it into private stock market accounts, which would not only endanger the system, it would destabilize it because we rely on those contributions to pay people collecting Social Security. This is the same person who called Social Security a Ponzi scheme and who doesn't believe in the program. And it, it is absolutely important that voters know you cannot send someone to Washington to fight to protect Social Security if he doesn't fundamentally believe in it. Question for the mayor, Representative Laughlin. Sure. You know, Obamacare was a mistake. It raised taxes. It cut care to seniors. Will you join me today in pledging to work to repeal those aspects of the national health care that cut care to seniors, raise taxes on businesses, raise taxes, and, and punish small business? Uh, the health care reform bill provides tax credits for 18,000 Rhode Island small businesses. It prohibits insurance companies from uh, excluding coverage of pre-existing conditions for 226,000 children in Rhode Island. It closes the donut hole and improves Medicare benefits for 177,000 Rhode Island seniors. It uh, reduces health care costs for as many as 106, I'm sorry, 11,600 retirees in Rhode Island who have health insurance. So there are many things in this health care reform bill which are good and I would fight hard to protect uh, this health care reform bill um, and work just as hard to make the changes that need to be made uh, to be sure that it's working for Rhode Island families and I think um, what's very important about this legislation is that it has you know cap is removed caps on uh, catastrophic illness treatment it has eliminated discrimination it has allowed young people to be on insurance while they're in universities from, for their parents insurance closing the donut hole for our seniors this is really important reform and we have to protect it and so is it a work in progress absolutely Absolutely, but, but repealing it is not the answer. Improving it is the answer. Representative Laughlin. Yeah, I think he just said he wants to protect the health care reform bill. I'd be more interested in protecting working families in Rhode Island uh, that are going to see their jobs disappear because of the provisions of this bill, the 1099s for all small businesses that they have to send to every single person they spend more than $600 with, a 3.5% tax on sale of homes, uh, the 2.5% the tax on uh, prosthetic devices, over $500 billion in new taxes, uh, which are going to crush jobs. And I think it's more important to protect Rhode Island workers and Rhode Island working families.